morning and welcome to St. Jacob Lutheran Church. I'm so glad that you are here today. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent and we continue our series on the Advent Brief. We begin by singing the opening hymn. It's to the tune of 592. The words are in your worship folder on pages 1 and 2 for our ministry. Father, we praise and worship you. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, whose birth was announced by the angels, and whose life and death restored us to the Father. Lord Jesus, we praise and worship you. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who brings us to faith and nourishes us through word and sacrament, to keep us in that faith. Holy Spirit, we praise and worship you. Amen. We confess our sins. Even as John preached the baptism for repentance to the people of Judea, so we are daily called to acknowledge before the Lord our sins and sinfulness. In his love for us, God gives us the power to repent and to become the sons of God. Father, I confess my sinfulness. Not all my crooked places have been made straight. Not all my rough places plain. With my life, my thoughts, my heart, I have many times said no to you. I have gone my own way. I have turned my back on you and on those around me. I am not worthy of your love. I am not prepared to receive you. And yet you come to me. You sent your only Son to die for me. In this resurrection, you have given me life. In him I trust. For the sake of your great mercy, O Lord, forgive us. Spare us the just punishment our sins deserve according to your promises declared to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant that for his sake we may live sober, upright, and godly lives to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We sing the hymn there on page three.
is recorded in Psalm 91, reading verses 9 through 12. Hopefully you'll see the connection in all the lessons for today. They have to do with angels. That's because of the angel canon. We read from Psalm 91. Yes, you, Lord, are my refuge. If you make the Most High your shelter, evil will not overtake you. Disaster will not come near your tent. Yes, he will give a command to his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to sing Psalm 85. You'll find that on page 97. On the words on the screen, please listen as the organist plays the song from the refrain. brighten this time of celebration. 
The first candle, the light of prophecy, reminds us of his marvelous promises fulfilled in Christ our Savior. The second candle, the Bethlehem candle, uh, takes us to the place where God gave the world his greatest gift. Over that little town, a bright star would shine, guiding some very wise men to the Savior. That light still beckons us to follow. The third candle, referred to as the shepherd candle, is a witness to the truth that the light of Christ is for all people. No matter how poor or lowly one might be, that light of salvation in Christ envelops him. When the angels sang their magnificent chorus that first Christmas night, the light of God's own glory brightened the darkened skies. The angel candle still speaks this glorious message. Come and worship Christ, the newborn king. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to it will toward men. We get to the unit by singing two verses of hymn 63, 1 and 3. <laughs>
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 1 2. Our text for this morning is Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Dear friends in Christ, if you talk to people today about angels, you will probably get various responses. Some will just smile at you as if to say, you still believe in the God, uh, the very Godmother too? Others might not be so kind, they might laugh and ridicule you. In this scientific age of ours, aren't angels just another relic from a superstitious age? The same company as elves, leprechauns, and fairies? Scour the Bible and you will find a different reaction. There you will find that angels are never the butt of jokes. They are never something to laugh at. Angels are real. If by God's grace you believe the Bible, then these holy messengers of God will inspire your awe and respect. But the modern day Christian may have a different problem when it comes to the holy creatures of God. Today's Christian may not dismiss the whole idea of angels, but too often he thinks that angels are only on the pages of the Old and New Testaments, and never in our world today, and never in my own daily life. Still, there are many today whose lives have been touched by an angel, and not just on acute television, sir. Some people have walked away from a tragic accident, and others have been miraculously protected in a pocket of safety while a tornado rips everything apart around them. The world naturally would scoff at such an immature belief. Many of our own members might be inclined to doubt the existence of angels, but let's remember that faith can move mountains, and doubt never will. This morning we will continue our series on the messages of the Advent wreath called Advent Candles Communicate Christ's Coming. We have looked at the prophecy candle and God's promise of a royal branch to come from uh, David's line who would be called the Lord our Righteousness. We have seen the Bethlehem candle and how God chose a tiny city for such a mighty purpose, the birth of our Savior. We have examined the shepherd candle that reminds us that we have a shepherd who cares for us and guides us. And now we come to the last colored candle called the angel's candle. Let us remind us this morning of the final advent yet to come. God's angels join in us, they join Jesus in the final advent. In the early 1860s, the Pony Express delivered mail between Missouri and California. Riders on horseback averaged 250 miles a day as they traveled through rugged and dangerous terrain. And only once was the mail lost, even though riders completed over 650,000 miles during the 18 months that they ran that run. The angels have a similar task. Not only do they police the world and guide God's people, but they also serve as spiritual Pony Express riders. The angels deliver God's mail or messages. They were especially busy before Christ's birth. The angels were caught up in the Christmas rush, we might say, by bringing divine messages to Zechariah, Mary, Joseph, as well as the shepherds. Our text from Matthew 21 states that the angels, God's divine messengers, will journey with Jesus when he uh, returns on the last day. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. Talking about angels during this blessed season of Advent and Christmas is not only fascinating, but also appropriate. The Gospel accounts for the season of the church year record many appearances of the angels. St. Luke opens his Gospel with the events leading up to, Christ, the, the, to the birth of Christ. He tells about the angel Gabriel who appeared to Zechariah the priest and told him that he and his wife Elizabeth in their old age would give birth to a son. Their son, John the Baptist, 
would become the great Advent uh, prophet and herald of the coming Savior. Six months later, this same angel Gabriel would come to a young virgin named Mary with the earth-shattering news that she would become the mother of the Savior. Do not be afraid, Mary, because, I, because you have found favor with God. Listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and his kingdom will never end. On Christmas Eve, the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds, keeping watch over their flocks at night. The messenger of God preached the first Christmas sermon. Today, in the town of David, a Savior was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. Suddenly, the, host, the heavenly host of angels said, of angels, we should say, bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward mankind. Later, an angel would appear to Joseph in a dream and warn him to take the Christ child to Egypt. Get up, take the child, his mother, and flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, because Herod will search for the child to kill him. Joseph obeyed, and he stayed in Egypt until Herod died. Angels also appeared to Jesus after he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights by the devil, and then the angels ministered to him. An angel from heaven strengthened Jesus in his depths of agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. On the great day of Christ's resurrection, an angel proclaimed the joyous Easter message. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. On the mount of his, uh, of his ascension, two of these heavenly messengers appeared to dumbstruck disciples and told them, This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have, um, you have seen him go into heaven. As the Pony Express, the angels had delivered God's messages numerous times to his people on earth. That record is even better than the Pony Express, since they have never lost God's name, not even once. Now our text tells us how the angels will accompany Jesus when he comes with great joy. When a son of man comes in glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the accounts and references of the Bible concerning angels teach that they are spirits who carry out God's wishes. Angels are presented in a serving and ministering role. For our enduring comfort, Scripture also assures us that angels serve God's people and watch over our children. And so Martin Luther included that gem in both his, evening, his morning and evening prayers when he said and wrote, Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. The fact that the angels are holy, that they are mighty, that they are numerous, has great significance for us to even today. But the greatest comfort is that these angels minister to Jesus, so they also minister or serve us. For we are united with Christ by faith. Through faith in Jesus, we are children of God. It's a privilege and comfort to know that God gives us his children such holy and mighty bodyguards, if you will. We know that one day, we will see them and become acquainted with these mighty messengers of God as Christ returns again from heaven in his final advent. The entire tone of advent is always on Christ's coming, most notably that coming to judge the living and the dead. It's impossible for us to twist the historical facts and, and create a mood that thinks of advent only as Christ coming in the flesh at Bethlehem. Truly we can and we should celebrate and observe the anniversary of Christ's birth and praise our God for implementing his plan to save us. But the theme of every advent yet to come, as long as the earth still stands, has to do with the final or the second coming of Jesus. The season of advent should really heighten 
and sharpen our hunger to be with Christ forever. It's a time when we have to repent of our sins and confess them before God and our neighbor. It's a time we have still to pray that the Christ who came to Bethlehem so long ago also paid the, the supreme sacrifice for us and for our sins on Calvary's cross, who rose on Easter and then returned to his heavenly Father. And he will come again to take us home. It's the time we long to leave this virus-stricken, disease-filled world, to look forward in eager expectation for Jesus to come again, to take us to a far blessed place. Experiencing such Advent hope, we can live spiritually productive lives and carry out our Christian duties in gratitude and devotion to our Redeemer. We can live confidently, knowing that our Advent Lord will yet send his holy angel to be with us in death and to carry our souls home to him in heaven. Then as the final moment, known only to God, that breaks upon the world, our final, our Advent King in dazzling display of power and glory will come with all his angels. For the Apostle Paul describes Christ's second coming in this way. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And so we will always be with the Lord. The trumpet will sound. The dead will raise, be raised incorruptible. And all people, both believers and unbelievers, will come before his glorious throne for judgment. Certainly from the reference of uh, this verse and other verses, God's word indicates that angels will take part in the final judgment. On judgment day, they will separate the wicked from the righteous, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. That day will be a devastating experience for all believers. <coughs> On that day, they will be separated for, from God for all eternity. But for believers, it will be a blessed experience who together with the angels and the archangel will raise a mighty chorus of praise that will fill the halls of heaven and say to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. As we light the angel's candle on the advent wreath, let it remind us of of God's love through Christ and all his holy angels who serve you. Think of the final advent yet to come, and then lift up your heads, for your redemption is near. Amen. May the peace that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ. We'll not have you up. Jesus, you gave yourself unselfishly for my salvation. The gift you now require from me is myself, all that I am and all that I have. Savior, here from my heart, I bring this offering to your altar. Accept it and use it as you see fit. With all things, it rightfully belongs to you. Amen.
Dear members of St. Jacob Evangelical Lutheran Church, Jimmy and Linda, having been baptized and instructed in the teachings of the Word of God, desire to become members of this congregation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus promises to confess before his Father in heaven those who faithfully confess him on earth. You stand before this congregation to declare your faith and to unite with us in Christian love and fellowship. Therefore, lift up your hearts to the God of all grace and joyfully answer these questions. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe that the teachings of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you have learned to know it from Luther's small catechism, is faithful and true to the Word of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend to continue in the true Christian faith, be diligent in the use of God's Word and sacraments, and to lead a godly life even to death? Even so, uh, if so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help. Will you support with your prayers, time, talents, and offerings the work of our Lord that he has given to this congregation? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help. I will, and I ask God Having heard your promises, we, the members of St. Jacob Evangelical Lutheran Church, receive you into fellowship and love and invite you to share in our worship and mission in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Welcome. <laughs> we pray. Lord Jesus, author and perfecter of our faith, in mercy you join Jim and Linda Lowry in to your church. In mercy you have taught them your saving truth. Grant that they may offer themselves as living sacrifices to their spiritual act of worship. Transform them by the renewing of their minds so that they will not conform to the pattern of this world. Help us live in love and harmony with one another and work together in serving you. Keep us united in your spirit and bring us at last to your eternal kingdom, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We will continue with uh, the prayer and the prayer. Holy Spirit, by whose power I have saving faith, guide and protect me through this busy season. Keep my heart and every desire, attitude, and activity focused on the babe of Bethlehem. Fill me with the peace the angels proclaim so I, that I do not get distracted, stressed, or anguish, and anxious because of the worldly pressures. Instead, give me joy and salvation, full and free, and strengthen my zeal to share the amazing news that Christ the Savior is born. Give me loving words to speak, a heart filled with prayer, and generosity that flows from abundant blessings received and promised. Open the hearts of the lost to receive the gospel truths our missionaries proclaim, and bless our missionaries with wisdom, joy, perseverance, and trust in you, and in the Son, and in the Father, the only true God. Today, Dear Lord, we come to you and we would ask you to comfort the heart of Sandra Welshans Valentine, whose husband, Ken Valentine, was called to his eternal home. Sandra is a sister to Tim Welshans, our president, and we know this must be troubling her heart. We ask that you would uh, have her dwell on her faith in you and be assured that her husband, our brother, is uh, there with you in heaven. While our loss may be difficult to endure, we pray that you would comfort us with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who saves and does so eternally. For all these blessings we ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. We join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Through his holy prophets, he promised a king to bring light to those living in darkness and in the shadow of death. Now have come the salvation and power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever.
May the receiving of Christ's true body and his holy precious blood assure you how much Jesus loved you. That he went the way of the cross, suffered and died, that you might know that you have forgiveness, faith, and a certain hope of eternal life. The peace of God be with you. Congregation is invited to sing the communion hymn, hymn 38. We'll do that two verses at a time.
child of God, whose sins have been forgiven, who has faith in their Savior Jesus Christ, and who will inherit eternal life.
Good morning and welcome to all of you, our guests and visitors. There's a guest book in the North East, and please come and join us again. Especially welcome Jim and Linda. And the courage to stand up in front of uh, at, um, not so easy, but thank you. And uh, I hope you take the opportunity to welcome them and uh, stay around for a picture. Okay. Helps us get them everybody to get you more we've done that too. Um, flowers on the altar have been donated by Marilyn Vice, so beautiful, and uh, in joyful appreciation uh, for Christ's birth. Uh, the angel tree, the, the gifts were today, right? Um, if you haven't uh, somehow returned uh, your force of the, the angel tree gift, uh, talk to Carol Zoltar about that. Uh, the final rehearsal for the Christmas Eve program practice is scheduled today um, after the service and um, hopefully lunch will be provided that we can do that as well. Uh, the church is looking for a custodian uh, uh, after, after Christmas. Um, the calendars are there in the cookbooks and Pastor also found the, uh, the Christmas balls. Remember that for five years ago? Not all of them were sold. <laughs> So if you want one, they're in a box in the village of Paul. Um, uh, somebody can direct you to them. Um, I don't know the rest that I have to mention. Um, um, any announcements from the group? See, none of I'll greet you on the way out and know that angels are there uh, to help us in all our life, even to taking us home to heaven. 